Welcome back. It's time to talk about the 2023 Chess.com Daily Chess Championship, which is a really long name for a tournament. The few of you that were here last year will remember I had an entire playlist on the 2022 iteration of the tournament. Uh, The short version of that story is I tied with the highest rated player in my group in the first round and still got eliminated. So I had to contact the tournament administrator to point out that I had tied with them and they bumped me into the advanced group. And so I advanced to the second round where I got a whole new group of players. That one included an international master who ended up winning that round for my group and advanced. But I did get a draw against the international master, which I think was my highlight of the tournament. But this year, there's only going to be one video about the 2023 Chess.com Daily Chess Championship. And that's because I was eliminated. And I was pretty sure as soon as I saw the group, which you can see here, that I would be eliminated before the games even started. Last year, I was rated around 1300 and the only player rated higher But this time I had two players rated higher than me, one of whom was rated about 1,700. But the highlight of this tournament was that I'm the only person that beat that second place player who was rated a little bit higher than me. They won all their games or drew. They even beat the first place player. That's the only loss that the first place player had. Um, And for the longest time, the person who's in second place now was leading our group. In fact, up until yesterday, they were leading our group, but the first place player had one game left and they won it sometime between yesterday and right now, and so they will advance, and all the rest of us will be eliminated. But I'm going to show you the game that I played against the second place player that I won. Now, I will say that there were 35,000 people in this tournament, but you don't play everybody. They divide you into groups of 12, and that's not random. There's some sort of computer formula that divides you into the groups of 12, and so I came out fairly high in my group because a lot of lower-rated people and about half the people in every group don't even make a move. They just time out. My other game against this player, I lost, and fairly badly. I will analyze it later and find out what I did wrong. But in this game, I felt like every move I made was just a logical response to what my opponent played against me after the first couple of moves. Uh, You can see here from the game report that I only had one mistake. No inaccuracies, no blunders, no missed wins. And my opponent had four inaccuracies, two mistakes, and one blunder. Now, honestly, I don't know where they made a mistake. Because I just remember during the game thinking, wait, I'm ahead. It seems like there was one point where I was able to trap one of their pieces, uh, but I don't remember for sure. I'm looking at this for the first time. So let's click over to the analysis page. Let's undo the feedback and the lines and just look with the eval bar. I played D4, as I almost always do, and my opponent responded with D5 and I played C4. A year ago this time, I was playing the London every time, but I couldn't quite get it figured out and it seemed like a lot of my opponents had a really good responses to it. So I've switched to the Queen's Gambit. Well, my opponent played this knight out here, which the computer says is the martial defense. Um, but a lot of times, if they don't play this knight and they play the e-pawn instead, I just go ahead and take this. If they, if I take here and they take back with the queen, obviously I think, obviously I would play knight to c3, which immediately forces the queen to go someplace, and then I've developed a piece with tempo. But here I just decided to take the pawn, and I was ready to play that knight, but they took back with the knight instead of with the queen. Here you can play e4, which I did. Seems like a logical response, because again, you're gaining a tempo, uh, forcing that knight to go somewhere. I don't know where it's supposed to go, where the best place for it to go is. I just know that now I have two center pawns. My opponent only has one center pawn, and it hasn't moved yet. And they can't move it now, because they have to move this knight. So, I thought I was doing fairly well, and they, okay, I thought I turned off the feedback. All right, well, the computer says that's an inaccuracy. I didn't know that at the time. I just, in fact, I assumed that's where they would put it. I don't know what they should have done instead. It seemed normal to me. I, now I can get my knight out. Wait, that's an inaccuracy too? Okay, Stockfish is really throwing me off. Well, not really Stockfish, but the game report. I mean, I, that gets out the lights, the dark squared bishop. I think that's what I would have played there too. Regardless, I got out my other knight. They put their bishop here, which is kind of what I expected after they played that pawn move. But that's okay. That knight is defended. I'm going to get this bishop out, and then I'm going to castle. That's my plan. I waited just a little bit to see if the bishop really wanted to take the knight, and it did. So I took back. Again, logical, reasonable responses. Stockfish eval bar says I'm already ahead 1.7. Of course, I don't know that during the game. I like my center. I like the fact I have a piece developed, and I'm one move from castling. But my opponent can castle now. They did castle, which is an inaccuracy. Really? I wasn't going to check my opponent's moves, but I'm going to go back and click the lines and see what they should have played here. Okay, two moves are about equal according to the stockfish lines, which haven't finished running yet, but it says that c5 or h6 are the two best moves at this point. But that kind of goes against opening principles, doesn't it? 
oh, now it's changed all of a sudden. Now it says knight to c6. Yeah, if I was my opponent, I would have castled here too. Now, remember what I said. My plan was to get out the light squared bishop and then castle. So that's what I did. My opponent got out their other knight, which is what the computer said was their best move on the previous turn. Oh, I left the lines on. Well, it does say that my best move is to castle. So that's what I did. Again, logical opening principles. That's all I'm doing here. I have a big center. Wait, that's inaccurate too. That's a completely normal move in this situation, intending to play uh, e5, I suppose. Um, I must have seen that during the game because I played e5 instead. And maybe that's why that was an inaccuracy. Maybe they should have played e5 first. I'm not sure. But since they didn't, I played e5, and now I have a fairly strong pawn chain here. The only problem, I guess, is that this rear pawn is undefended, but I can defend it quickly a couple of different ways. Uh, for that matter, I can move it forward to defend it with the bishop. I think I'm doing okay here, but I have no idea that I'm up, well, plus six? Wait, okay. So that was a mistake. One of my opponent's multiple mistakes, according to the game review. I don't know why that was a mistake, because I can't take it. I can push the pawn to challenge it. It's threatening to come in here, though. Okay, and that's what I saw during the game is that that spot, whether the pawn moves or not, that spot is undefended. And I guess I didn't want them trying to infiltrate down in here. If I had pushed the pawn, I don't know where they would have gone, maybe gone back. Is that what I should have done? Well, what I did was protect the pawn, and it says that's a mistake. Well, I'm going to check here. Actually, just let me guess and see. I'm going to guess that either I should have defended this pawn with the bishop, probably on b2. I don't like defending it on d2, because that cuts off my queen's defense of my bishop. So I'm going to say either bishop to b2, which defends my c-pawn, or just pushing the pawn, which attacks the knight. It does allow the knight to come in here, but then it's not really threatening anything except this queen, which I could just move there, which was a mistake. This or this are my two guesses. Let's click the lines and see what I should have... Okay, I'm very surprised by that. Bishop captures h7 check. That's what Stockfish says is my best move. And remember, the game report said I only had one mistake in the game. And this was it. Okay, I do understand that if the king takes it, that I would then have a check here with the knight protected. I know that the queen points at that square, but so does my bishop. Okay, so if I played there and the king took, I could follow with a check with my knight or with my queen. I don't know which one would be best, maybe either. But I also know that the king doesn't have to take. They just would have gone down a pawn. So the king could have moved over at that point, one way or the other, and I would have gone up a pawn. Let's see. Okay, so if I took, what's, is it the, okay, their best move is to take back. Their second best move, which isn't much worse, is to move over. And it's much worse than that to go here. I assume if they moved over, then I, it says I would bring my knight there. Uh, but I, I thought that I would have brought my queen if they had gone to the corner. But their best move is to take back. And then I would check, right? Yeah. Okay, that's why I wouldn't have taken if I were them, probably. Oh, and now it says their best move is to take with the queen. And give up their queen. For the knight. Okay, that surprises me. Why wouldn't they just move back? That's because I would then go here, where I'm threatening two different checks. So then their best move would be, would still be to take the knight? Okay, see, I never would have guessed all of that. And that's why I didn't play that. So I'm going to back up to where I was. I think in my, in my, at my level, I'm not going to see all those lines. All I'm going to see is, yes, if I take that and they took back, then that would be a check, but then I'm not going to be able to follow much more often. And I'm certainly not going to know what to do if they, I'll know what to do if they take because my bishop's back here, but I don't think my opponent would take there. And then I wouldn't know what to do. So that's why I'm not going to play that. Obviously, I do see that my bishop's pointing there. That's one of the reasons that you put it on d3 in the first place. And that's a reason to put the queen here so that the king can't take it when you take there eventually. So I think at my level, it's actually better to do this because I would get down there and get lost. They would end up doing something tricky with one of these pawns. My bishop would get trapped and I'd get stuck. It says it's a mistake, but I'm still up plus two. And now if I ever do see this, I'm going to be okay. And my opponent then played h6, which we saw a couple of moves ago was their best, best move. Rookie one is what I played, which seems reasonable. I guess I was thinking they might try a push like this. Um, their knight and their queen are guarding that square, f6. If I ended up taking, or if they ended up taking me, I figured it would be nice to have extra uh, defense on that square and along this file. That was my only thinking on that move. But they brought their knight back there. So I finally challenged this knight that it was a mistake for them to put in the center. It says I'm doing fairly well. Okay, I think it was here that I realized I want a piece. Okay, this is the point that I was talking about where I, th I thought to myself, I think I'm ahead because... I thought that they were going to put this knight 
Can't draw arrows today. I thought they were going to put this knight back here on b6. And then I couldn't really challenge it because then they could just put it back in the middle where it was. So I wasn't really threatening it. What I was trying to do here was just get a bigger center. They definitely shouldn't have done that. So I'm going to guess they should have gone to b6. Yeah, b6 was their only good move here. Okay, but for some reason they went here. And maybe they thought they were about to get trapped if they went down there. Um, like I said, if I had pushed the pawn, they could have just come back. So I didn't think they were about to get trapped. But they went there and just gave me the piece. So now I'm up plus six. Now, I don't know this during the game. I just know I'm up a piece against a higher rated player. Temporarily up a piece. Okay. Now that they've moved that pawn there, I decided to put my queen behind the dark squared bishop instead of the light squared bishop and aim here. Um, I don't really want to put my knight in there just yet because, of course, the H pawn is there. But I'm up a piece, so I can throw away one of these. I haven't yet decided which one. Okay, they put their knight there, which I don't think was good. Okay, Stockfish didn't think it was good either. It went up to plus 10. Well, here, as I said, the whole reason I had just moved my queen over was to hit that pawn, so I did. They didn't take back, which surprised me. I thought they were going to take back, and I was going to get my queen in here, which wouldn't be check yet, but then I could follow with my knight. But they didn't take back. They moved their queen here, and I wasn't sure exactly why they did that, because I wasn't necessarily going there. Well, I thought to myself during the game, I don't know if this is my best move or not, but I thought they didn't take my bishop on h6. So what if I just leave it there for a second? They can still take it, but they could have taken it last turn. So I kind of got a, I have a free bishop right now. So I just left it there and I took the knight. Oh, the, the number dropped just a little bit to plus nine. Okay, so maybe that wasn't my best move. Should I have brought my bishop back or should I have gone ahead and taken another pawn? h4. Well, I never would have guessed that. h4. Really? I can see that that's aiming to come to h5 to drive out their knight, but their knight's not really in my way right now, especially since I was just about to take it. But h4, how about that? Or bringing my bishop back to g5. I didn't want to bring my bishop back to g5, and the reason is because it's blocking my queen's path to over there, which is where I want my queen pretty soon. Um, so anyway, uh, but, but okay, I played my third best move. All right, let's turn off the lines. That was my third best move. And again, I told you my thinking. They didn't take the other bishop, so I might as well throw the other one over there too. And now, as a free gift to my opponent, they get to choose which bishop they want to take. I don't know which one's better for them to take. They took that one. Well, that allowed me to bring this to g5. Now, here I did it because I figured whichever bishop they took, I was going to save the other one. So I saved it here, even though it is blocking my queen, and it's taking up the square I want to put my knight on eventually. But, as you'll see, I don't need that just yet. Not sure why they brought their queen over there. I don't know if that was a good move for them or not. I can see that they're aiming here. I'm thinking they might be about to put a rook behind it. And I thought, well, my queen is guarding this pawn. But the only thing guarding that knight is this pawn. And I don't want to break open my, my king here. So let them aim at the pawn instead of the knight. That was my thinking. Also, uh, that pawn there is kind of blocked off by my bishop. And from here, my knight patrols these squares. My bishop patrols these squares, and as I said, my queen is guarding this one. So I, I've got this whole, almost the entire file under control. Another reason I wanted to move my knight is I wanted to bring my rook over here, and the knight was in the way. So without the knight there, I can bring my rook over. And since my bishop's in the way, I can't bring my queen just yet. That was my idea. Okay, but then they played over there, which kind of threw me off, but I didn't want a pawn sneaking in here and, and get gumming up the works, so to speak. So I just left everything in place on the king side, and I brought this unused rook over. So really that move of theirs just allowed me to bring my rook into the game. So if they take, I'll take back. If they push forward, I'll take back. And that whole threat will have ended. And I can go about my kingside attack here. But instead they put their bishop there. But that seemed really easy to stop. Whatever they were planning here. I assume they were planning on moving that pawn so that their bishop would aim down here at my king. But guess how I stopped that? Looky there. That pawn's not going anywhere. And now that bishop's not going anywhere. So they just wasted a bishop move. I, the eval bar didn't jump again, so I'm guessing that was one of my better moves. Okay, now they did what I thought they were going to do the whole time. Well, I'm not worried about this, because they have two attackers on this square, and I have two defenders on this square. My queen and my king. So they're not going to throw their queen away, because I'll just take it. Then they'd have to throw their rook away, and I would take that too. And sure, they could bring another rook over to check, but then I could just go back. And I would be fine. Uh, for that matter, I could probably go forward and be fine, but I'm not following it that far out. I just know that I wasn't worried. So I went with my plan. I told you I wanted to bring this rook over here. That was half the reason I moved the knight in the first place. Well, then they got their queen out of the way, which made me wonder why they put it there to begin with 
if they just wanted to put the rook over here, well, now that pawn's undefended. So they, because they moved their queens. Now they're obviously they're thinking about leading with the rook, but now they undefended that front G pawn. So I took it, which is threatening the rook, of course. And they move there. And remember when I said I wanted to bring my rook over? Stockfish hasn't found a mating sequence yet. I thought for sure I had a mate here. How can they get out of that? Guess they have to give up this rook or move it someplace so that the king can get out behind it this way. Let me turn on the lines. Just, I'm just curious. Yeah, rook to f5. Oh, okay. I'm getting better at this. They need to play rook to f5 so that their king has an escape square because their king can't come this way because of my rook and my knight. And I'm about to put my rook down there in the corner. Okay, so when my opponent did that, I knew I had won. Why did they play that? This is a person who was 1400 when the, when the tournament began and now they're 1500 because as you saw on the tournament page, they won all their games except for one or two draws and this one. Because for me, especially having just seen this rook moved over, and even if you forgot what the last move was because daily games can go on for a long time, you can always click the back button and see what was the opponent's last move. So he would have known that was my last move and their only reason to move over there was to go here. So the opponent had to have known there was a maiden one. If you know there's a mate in one, look for a way out of it, right? And even I found this, which I don't always find my ways out of these things, but I found it this time. I think that's the only safe square for the rook to go to that would have given the king an out. Wait, no, it could have gone back, right? If it had gone back and I checked in the corner, the king could have come out this way. But it says the second best move is here. No, no, no. Second is down here. Really? Rook to f5 is first. Down here is second place f3 okay and six is third so moving back is horrible how, how bad would that have been wouldn't that have given the, the king an out as well it would have given me a mating sequence okay because i still would have checked in the corner they would have had to go here oh and then i just would have won the rook i thought for sure at this point i would have whoops i would have checked with the queen what is wrong with my arrows today oh no if i checked with the queen they could have got out but no they if they had done that i would have had mate really it says to it says for me to take the rook how bad would this have been it would have, oh, because, because the knight's undefended, they can go that way. Oh, I would have messed that up if they had done something different. Ah, okay. But instead of any of those rook moves, even that one, which as you saw, I would have messed up. Instead of that, they put their queen here, which obviously does aim this way, but it didn't stop my checkmate. So I was pretty happy with this game, uh, the fact that I won. But again, I didn't feel like it was really special on my part. Everything that I did, everything that I did well, was just a reasonable or a logical response to what my opponent was doing. And as we saw in this game, uh, through the game review, some of their early moves were inaccuracies, which gave me like a plus two and a half after just a few moves, uh, which I didn't know at the time. But when I, when I got that night, I knew I was ahead, but I also knew I had to be careful. Somebody doesn't get to 14 and 1500 by throwing away games. And this person almost won our group, as we saw on the tournament page. And there are a few more games ongoing. I still have four games left. That's what those four little squares mean on my row. But I don't have enough, even if I win all four of those, which I might not. So it looks like I'm going to finish where I am now in fourth place. And I'm okay with that. I think I did all right. So uh, congratulations to everyone who did win their first round, including Eduardo Neval. And also congratulations to Parth0501, who was leading this group until yesterday and almost pulled it off. They, in fact... They did better against the number one player than anybody else. They beat them and they got a draw against them. So hopefully both of those people are proud of their performance and good luck to Eduardo in the next round and everybody else that made the next round in their groups. And thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.